is worthy. How many of you know that the Lord is worthy? The man is certainly worthy of all the praise. As they were singing that song, my mind was going to the scripture that says, I'm not going to allow any rocks to cry out to me. Amen. We're going to praise the Lord. He said, let everything that have what? Praise ye the Lord. And we will worship him. We will praise him. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in our life. He said, my soul shall make a boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And then I like what he said, oh, magnify. Amen. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. It's good to exalt the name of the Lord. It's good to lift up the name of the Lord, especially in times of trouble, especially in times of refuge, in times of reflection, especially in times of sadness. You got to reflect on the Lord. David himself said, I encourage myself in the Lord. When he was down there in Ziklag, and he had lost everything, the enemy had stole his family, stole his treasure. Amen. Not only his family, but the families of his army. And they were going to turn on David. But David sought the Lord. How many know it's good to seek the Lord? To seek the Lord. Amen. David sought the Lord. And the scripture says that David asked the Lord whether or not he should pursue. And the Lord told him that he should pursue. But before then, the Bible says that David encouraged himself. Amen. You got to encourage yourself in the Lord. Hallelujah. Be glad and be happy that God is on your side. There's a lot of encouragement in the Word of God. There's a lot of encouragement in the fellowship of the saints of God. There's a lot of encouragement when He prayed before the Lord. Amen. God has various means of giving us encouragement. Even when we look and see the wonders of heaven and earth, you should be encouraged. You should know that God is on the throne and that he's worthy to be praised. So right now, we're going to change the order of our service. My God, I'm so excited. I'm so happy to be here uh, with you all in the presence of the Lord. Truly, God is our strength and our shield and our buckler. Amen. We're going to ask uh, Sister Sharice if she would... Uh, Take up our offering basket and um, uh, thank you, Lord. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And um, walk around. Hold on, sis. Hold on. We got to break down. I like your enthusiasm. You, you've got enthusiasm. Thank you, Lord. As we get our time and our offerings together, Amen. So we can give unto the Lord. Uh, we want you to remember uh, also that we have online giving, which is through Tidely. Uh, by now, people should have a recognition of, of what that is. Go uh, on to Tidely, download the app, and find our church. You should be able to give. And also, too, uh, those uh, people are still using our Dropbox, the secure box. Amen. That's another means to give. And we're also uh, giving through our uh, service here on today. And we certainly do thank God and praise God for your giving. Uh, it's an opportunity for you to be blessed. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. When you give, you show uh, reverence unto God. That, Lord, you are my supply. Lord, you are my strength. You, Lord, you are my provider. And God loves what kind of giver? A cheerful giver. God wants you to give cheerfully. And he wants you to be a liberal. <laughs> he says he wants you to be a liberal giver. He says if you sow sparingly, you shall what? But if you sow abundantly or bountifully, you should reap how? Abundantly. Amen. So uh, we want you, the church, to stand. Thank you, Lord. And uh, as we are standing, 
Is that? Let's uh, pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to hear and to sow seed into the kingdom. We ask you, Lord, that you bless each and every soul here on today that is sowing seed into the kingdom. Bless them 30, 60, and 100 fold. And also, Lord, remember your promise that you would open up the windows of heaven, that you would pour them out blessings that they don't have room enough to receive. And remember your promise, Lord. You said that you would rebuke the devourer. And Lord, we pray, Lord, that we know that you cannot lie and that you cannot fail. And Lord, we trust in your promises and we give you thanks. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And Sharice, I want you to come on up to the front here. Uh, amen. And as you're standing, I want you to do this kind of like in an orderly fashion. Just go down the aisle. Uh, go down the aisle. There you go. Down the front.
heal in this place. We thank the Lord for the anointing that is in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We want to celebrate anyone that is out there that celebrates a birthday. Amen. On this week or has celebrated on last week. We thank God for you. Amen. And we also want to thank God for all of my graduates. Amen. Brother John Thomas, you graduated from our alma mater. Amen. Mercy Hurts College. Amen. And he's uh, looking to start his graduate work. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Come here, God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to look for the youngest undeserved. Uh, undeserved. <laughs> the undeserved. Amen. Hallelujah. We certainly do thank God uh, for such a man like that. I see him one day running his own nonprofit. Amen. And serving the people uh, whom God and love and put in, in his care. So we certainly do thank God for that. Thank you, Lord. We uh, appreciate you all coming out uh, here to be with us on today in Christian Ministries. Amen. We have gone to a two tier type of service, one beginning at 9 to 10 30, and then our 11 o'clock service until 12 30. And this has given our members an opportunity uh, to come into the house of the Lord and to be safe. Uh, we have structured a facility here where we uh, have social distancing and we require. Members are out there, our monitors are out there taking attention. People come in, amen, and we're requiring that people use the hand sanitizer or wash your hands and uh, thank the Lord before entering. And we just want to be saved, yeah. amen? Yeah. Thank the Lord, and we'll be sterilizing and clean services. And then uh, we've also uh, hired professional service and be able to come in twice a month. Keep steam clean uh, to uh, clean our, our church. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. You want this to be a corona free place. Amen? Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You know, I mean, my members, as far as I know, no one in the church is my members. Scripture 
that talks about uh, Jesus would not fail in, in his assignment. And we know that Jesus had not failed in his assignment because he sent back the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is evidence of Jesus reaching the destination all the way to the throne of grace to give us what we need in these times of trouble. And we certainly do thank God for the anointing, we thank Him for the power, and we thank Him for the Word. I want you to go with me to the book of Acts, and you stand in Acts chapter number 2. And we do thank God for your liberal giving, and we want to remember you saying that, but I do appreciate that giving. Acts chapter number 2, and we want to begin reading and skip down to verse 14. And as we have already seen it, the Holy Ghost had already fallen, and they had began to speak in tongues that the Spirit of God gave the evidence, and they had already started to talk about all the amazing and marvelous things that God had done. The beauty of, of this was, was that they, God had assembled all nations under the heaven to be in Jerusalem at that particular time so that they can witness the amazing power of the Holy Ghost. So when they spake in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the other tongues being, they spake in different languages that were all of them. That, that spoke of the blessings of the Lord, the marvelous works of the Lord. And as we know in the scriptures that uh, once this had happened, they had some detractors. They were wondering what, what, what needed this. Amen. And then some rose up and said that these men are drunk. And how can you be drunk <laughs> talking about the marvelous works of God? Thank you, Lord. Talking about the miracles that God had done. But they said that they were drunk. And Peter rose up and said that these men are not drunk as ye suppose, being it is but the third hour, nine a.m. in the morning. And that's where we pick up on our, our lesson. Verse 14, it says, But Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken unto my word. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see vision. And your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants now my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of thy spirit, and they shall promise. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly do thank you. We praise you, Lord, for this opportunity to stand here before thy great people. We ask you, Lord, that you comfort my mind, my spirit, my soul, and my body. Bless those that are hearing this great word on today. And Lord, we bind an evil spirit and the demonic power that would come to him. Father, uh, we thank you, we praise you, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Amen. Please be seated in the presence of the Lord. And I just want to sincerely take a thought for today from that. 16 verse. But this is that 
which was spoken of by the prophet Joel. I just want to take a thought saying that this is that. This is that. Can we say that together? This is that. And Peter, he begins to literally preach from the prophet, the prophet Joel. And as he begins to preach from that prophet Joel, and literally quote from that particular book, he begins to literally talk about what was prophesied and what was talked about at that particular time. And the book of Joel is a very interesting book. That book has three poetic chapters in it. And it's a book that talks to us about God and it talks to us about repentance. In that book of Joel, it really doesn't give an indictment of sin. The book of the prophets, they generally tell you what God is angry about. But Joel seems to be a student of the scriptures, and he, in his book, kind of goes straight to the point to call the people to repentance. And he does this because he expects other people to have taken the time out to read Ezekiel and to read Isaiah and Hosea and all of the prophets. For in it, it tells why God was angry with his people because they had sinned against him and he had led them into captivity and he was bringing them out of captivity, out of their bondage that he had sent them in for 70 years. But as I said that the book of Joel, whose name means Jehovah is God, he approaches it with what I call a chronicle. He gives a chronicle of what God is seeking for in these last days. He's talking to them about how God is looking for motivation. He's looking for judgment. And God is looking for hope. When he talks about God is looking for motivation, he wants the people to be motivated to repent. Motivated to turn their hearts back to God. And that's a very powerful thing when an individual realizes that repentance is needed in order to have a right relationship with God. When Jesus came on the scene, he said, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then Joel begins to talk about judgment. And in his judgment, he's saying that he's praying that God would forgive his people and not punish those that turn back to God, but get those that, that don't regard God. Get those who are the enemy of God. So then he also talks about hope. Uh, and this hope is that People would repent and turn their heart to God and God would do a new thing. That God would literally turn around their captivity in the midst of their captivity. And that's so intriguing unto me because it, it kind of branches off into what we call a dichotomy in what we're living in today. There's a lot of turmoil, there's a lot of chaos that is going on in today's world, but there still is hope. Uh, no matter how dark the night, no matter how dark the night, there still is hope. The scripture says that we be made in two or four nights, 
joy coming in the morning. My friend, it doesn't matter how rough you may think things are. Uh, your Bible tells you, don't give up. Your Bible tells you, don't give in. I see my David said, I'm going to look to the hills from which coming my help. Because I know that all of my help coming from the Lord. The Bible tells you that they that wait upon the Lord. Uh, you got to wait on the Lord. He said, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up as wings of eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Uh, you know, uh, can I just be honest with you just for a moment? Can I just be honest with you just for a moment? That those that, that literally will trust in the Lord and literally read the scriptures and, and literally put all of their hope in the word of God, those are the ones that are able to survive the storm. Those are the ones that are able to endure hardness as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Those that, that, that know that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God, they are a type of people that have been cut from a different cloth. They are the type of people that say what Job said, that though you slay me, yet will I trust you. Let go. 
that he sent out unto us, it shall not return unto us more. And it says that it shall come to pass that in the last days. Hallelujah. And that's the equivalent with Paul, with, with Joel was saying that in the day of the Lord. We know that we are living in the last days. My God, the Bible talks to us and it tells us that we are living in the last days. In the book of 2 Timothy, chapter number 3, hallelujah, Paul tells us that we are living in the last days and perilous times have come. And you don't have to go far and realize that you're living in a perilous time. That people are going to hate other people. That people are going to be highlighted and headed. Hallelujah. That people are going to love themselves more than they love God. And that's the indication that we're living in the last days. And that phraseology, that phraseology of living in the last days, it means that we're living in the time of the Messiah. My God, they realized that in the last days uh, that the Messiah would come. In the last days, Jesus would come in his rebellion. Jesus would call the scene uh, with all power that Jesus would show up uh, as weak and humble as the Lamb of God that was slain before the foundation of the world that he would establish a kingdom upon this earth so that all can come in and be set free. So the Bible talks about that we're living in the last days. In the book of Paul, in the book of Hebrews chapter number one, the Bible says that God in sundry times and God in divers matters, he has spoken unto us by the prophets. But in his last days, somebody say, in the last days, he has spoken unto us by his son, whom he has made heir of all things, whom he has appointed heir of all things, whom he has made the world. Because we're living in the last days, uh, he means the express image of his person, the brightness of his glory, when he had by himself. He burns our sins and sat down at the right hand of the Father with an expectation that all of his enemies of oh our God and all the enemies of God would be made his pursuit. Now I am part right here just for a moment. We got to realize, my friends, uh, that the enemies of God ought to be our enemies. And the enemies of God our, our enemies. The enemy is death. The enemy is sin. The enemy is lying and cheating and stealing. The enemy is murder. The enemy is hypocrisy. Oh, I can go on and on. But Jesus, when he died on the cross and he got up from the grave, he got up with all power over anything that can hold you captive. He got up with all power to destroy anything that could keep you bound. He gave you the victory. So the Bible says, my God in heaven, just for a little while, he said that it shall come to pass that in the last days, God is going to pour out of his spirit uh, among all flesh. Uh, in the last days, which we're living in and today, God is going to pour out His Spirit. And that pouring out of the Spirit, it denotes, uh, hallelujah, somebody pouring out water out of a pitcher. It denotes, uh, hallelujah, that God, He is going to do a new thing in the midst of you and I. That God was going to pour out. He was going to give you fresh water. He was going to give you a fresh authority. It reminds me of Jesus. My God, I'm getting ahead of myself. It reminds me of that rock uh, that was rolling 
out of this wilderness. And Moses smote that rock. But out of that rock came water. It came a refreshing to refresh the people of God in the wilderness. It reminds me of the story that Jesus, when he talked to the woman, that good Samaritan woman at the well, he begins to tell them that if you know who I am, you will ask me to give you water. Say all matter of 
make me laugh. Put the over mountains in a single bound. I'm not talking about Superman. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. It's my own shot. Hallelujah. And this spirit is Joel who said, My God is available. It's available to you. Uh, because he says he wants it to pour it out on all flesh. And if you can just go with me, just to the book of Joel, chapter number two. My God. Chapter number two. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah. Joel chapter number two. We find my scripture. And I want it. Hallelujah. Chapter number two. And verse number five. Thank you, Lord. If you haven't said that, Joel says this. And this is the crux of his message. He says, Therefore, also now, say the Lord, turn you even to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping. And with more. Verse 13 says, And rend your heart, not your heart, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to great of great kindness, and repentant him of the evil. Who know it? If you will return and repent and leave a blessing. The scripture said that if you want the Holy Ghost, you've got to repent. You've got to turn from the evil and turn to God. And if you turn from evil and turn to God, it says it there that for God is gracious, merciful, slow to anger, and of great kindness, and tenant of the evil. He's saying, break your heart, not your power. Don't come to God being fake and phony, because God knows your heart. He sees the heart. And God wants you to have his spirit. Joel was looking toward a day where God had would fulfill in the scriptures that he would give you a new heart and renew a right spirit within you. That's why when the people said to Peter after he got through preaching, they said, then remember, what shall we do? Peter said, repent. Now, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Jack. He said, and ye shall be filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. God wants to give us the Holy Ghost. He wants to show himself strong in us. The Bible says that you be evil, know how to give good things to your children. How much more? Tell your neighbor, how much more? Shall your father give the Holy Ghost to them that ask you? Jesus, hallelujah, he is the giver of the Holy Ghost. If you call on the name of the Lord, thou shalt be saved. If you ask him for the Holy Ghost, but you got to repent. You got to say, Lord, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Hallelujah. You know, you need the Holy Ghost that leads you to repentance. Hallelujah. You got to say, Lord, I'm done. I'm finished. 
I want to live right. I want to do right. Up to the minute that people who are struggling with getting the Holy Ghost, they haven't came to true repentance. You know why I'm convinced of that? Because the Lord is gracious. The Lord is merciful. And though, though uh, evil is chasing you, God said, if you repent, he'll repent of the evil. He'll turn. And he'll give you the Holy Ghost. And wouldn't it be contradictory if you were building a kingdom and your subjects come to you and repent? And you say, you look at them and say, nah, go ahead. They repent truly. You look at them and say, nah, go ahead. Wouldn't that be contradictory? Your God is wiser than us. Your God is wiser than you and I. He, he wants to build a king. He wants you to be saved. He wants you to be delivered. But what holds you between two of you? If God be God, serve him. Trust in the Lord. If you need help, if you need repentance, Turn to your God. And God will give you what you need. Tap your hands and give God a praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let the church stand. This is the awkward point. You know, if there's anybody that wants to get baptized in the name of Jesus, Please, you can. Amen. We got a penny for those who get baptized in the name of Jesus. Our protocol is thank you, Lord. She will go back and get the clothes together, put them on the table, and then you take them, take them to the restroom, change it to those clothes, and we'll give you uh, another mask so that we can baptize you. Here, and then you'll put on your hands that you have on them. We thank God for you. Hallelujah. My God. And if there's true repentance, God will fill with the precious people of the Holy Come on and give God a praise. We're living in the last days. We're living in perilous times. And God is truly on our side. Is there anybody that desires prayer? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Well, let us pray. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you for this anointing. We thank you, Lord, for your presence. We thank you, Lord, for the power that is here on today. Lord, we ask you to look upon the sword that is going down in your name. Lord, that you fill it with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Give us strength to believe. Give us strength to trust in you. Hey, Hallelujah. You're gracious. You're merciful. You're abundant of loving kindness. And Lord, we thank you that you repent of any evil. And Lord, help us. Help us and strengthen us. Lord, let your grace rest upon Christian ministry. Let your grace rest upon the body of Christ. And Lord, bring us together in unity and love. Father, we thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We have lifted hands, my Lord. One faith, one baptism. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Is there somebody in our heart? Hallelujah. And know that your God is here. Praise